be a strong demand for Chinese nationals employed by offshore gaming companies has really strengthened uh, occupancy in uh, the completed buildings or secondary condo projects across Metro Manila. 12.4% vacancy in first quarter of 2018, this declined further to 11.3% for the second quarter of the year. So you can see here, Manila Bay Area recorded the fastest decline in vacancy followed by Fort Bonifacio. The prices of uh, secondary condo units in Metro Manila has continuously been increasing. You have Rockwell, which commands still the highest price per square meter, 223, followed by your uh, condo units in Makati, CBD, and then Fort Bonifacio. How is the offshore gaming sector impacting the residential demand in Metro Manila? So we zero in on two major sublocations benefiting greatly from offshore gaming operations. You have uh, this one, this is in Makati. So as you can see here, the office buildings that have uh, offshore gaming companies have tenant, as tenants have uh, occupancy of as high as 94%. The uh, pre-selling condos uh, are recording a take up of 78, almost 80%. While the secondary condos near these office buildings uh, that are housing offshore gaming companies are fully occupied. And if you look at the rental rate of uh, secondary condo, it grew by 17% year on year, much faster than the one to 2% uh, I presented earlier. And the uh, rental rate of office leasing uh, in these uh, buildings grew by 10% year on year. We are also presenting the hotel segment, and of course the uh, new airport, new terminal rather in Cebu Airport recently opened, and that will be a major boost to Philippine infrastructure tourism, uh, which will definitely boost tourist arrivals in the country. And uh, we are experiencing record high arrivals, especially from Chinese tourists, and the developers are responding by, by ramping up uh, hotel development. So 3.2 million is the total tourist arrivals for the first five months of the year, an increase 10% year on year. Now, Chinese uh, tourists grew by 43%, already reaching 560,000. And we are optimistic that given the current trend, uh, the government will be able to achieve its target of 1.5 million visitors from China. So the number of uh, foreign arrivals it's not just rising, but the foreigners here in the Philippines are actually spending more and staying longer. And uh, if you look at Chinese South Korean markets, Chinese uh, uh, visitors, for instance, in 2016, a Chinese, invest, a, a Chinese tourist would spend $63 in the Philippines. In 2017, that more than, almost, more than tripled to $233 a day. So more, for the rivals, great expenditures means a greater share of the tourism sector to the Philippine economy. So from 7.9% in 2012, the tourism sector share to the Philippine economy grew by 12, reached 12.2% last year. As a result, major sectors such as passenger transport and hotels are benefiting from these uh, increased arrivals. There's um, two sectors of the offshore gaming. You have the website development, support services. So they're very much like your business process outsourcing. And then you have the offshore gaming, where there are actually online games happening within, within the office uh, premises. So, so there's two. They can be owned by Koreans, different nationalities. Even Filipinos have offshore, uh, offshore gaming. Right, so your e-games, um, your numbers games, so, but largely, largely, largely you see uh, Chinese-owned um, uh, corporations, but not all of them are owned by the Chinese. Yes, uh, probably around fifty percent. Like I don't have the exact numbers, but yeah, anecdotal evidence would show that it's around 50 percent. Okay, so the IPVPM that was the strongest for the past five years or so has actually slowed down. And the slowdown is 100% on a quarter and quarter. 
So this is something that we have to really look at, slow down, not only for IPBPM, but the entire office sector. Demand has slowed down by 22%. The, there is an, uh, an environment today of uncertainty. Where are we going? Where is train going? You have train two now. Um, if I were to answer the IPBPM, it's because the train two will affect, will impact, and likely be detrimental for the IPBPM sector. Because you have, they used to have um, zero percent uh, taxes, yeah. correct? They don't. They're not supposed to be paying around VAT. But on the eighth year of that um, incentives, they will be paying a rate of around five percent of taxes. With train two, that is increased around fifteen percent. Uh, Pogo. I mean, this basically just shows. Uh, which district they are in at the moment. There's around 450 approximately of spaces that are taken up by the Pogo, uh, by the Pogo offices. Uh, they are largely found in the Bay Area and Makati City, but right now the fastest growing Pogo district is Las Piñas and Pasig. We have not seen any Pogos in Quezon City just yet, but basically as I've mentioned, their preference is the Bay Area and the Makati area. In terms of rental rate, because of the low supply uh, vacancy and the high and the low vacancy, uh, limited supply, we have seen an increase in um, in rent by around four percent for Makati and two percent for uh, for the gate. And the gap between these two cities <coughs> have actually increased by around two percent, from twenty-two to twenty-four percent. 